Hello all. This is like take four. And that is unusual for me because typically I'm someone who just gets on here, does my video and keeps it pushing because life is busy. Specifically this morning, my husband actually wasn't even able to go to work because one of the cars wasn't started. But you know, y'all know what I believe. I believe in positivity, law of attraction. Yes, venting, screaming, having your moment when you need to, but then moving it, moving on and getting on to what you can accomplish. So long story short, the car wouldn't start. Not the best day to do that, but you know how life is. But the great news is my husband is so awesome with fixing things more so than I realize. And I've really appreciated him, um, you know, um, in many ways, but especially with the car and the handy stuff that I'm not that good at. I know my strengths and my weaknesses. So anyways, long story short, we realized it was a starter and he's going to fix that. Talking about fixing, how can we fix ourselves? How can we heal ourselves? Healing is a word that can rub people's, you know, some people the right way and some people the wrong way, especially when I start to say that I believe we can heal ourselves and we can heal others. So that is a big statement. Um, one that I don't just say lightly, but one that I do know is grounded in science. What science would I point you to specifically? Well, I'm going to point you to Dr. Joe Dispenza. This man is amazing. Um, to me, what I love about him is he's blending science and spirituality into a perfect little bundle ball and just releasing it to the world so that no matter what your spiritual or scientific beliefs are, he's grounding everything in experiments. And so he's not just saying something to say it. He's actually looking at the patterns. He's being very methodical about it. And this has been happening over the years. What's awesome about Dr. Joe Dispenza as well is he's speaking from personal experience. He actually was paralyzed and was told he wasn't going to be able to walk, but he refused to take that for an answer and was able to heal himself and then said, you know, um, if I'm able to get out of this hospital and heal myself, I'm going to study the science of healing for the rest of my life and teach others. And look, he's doing it, y'all. So um, side note, I had this is take four because I, my hair is wet and I just got the shower and the water kept dripping down my neck and it was so distracting. And then Lunda came and distracted me. So the, at this point, if I have another distraction, we're going to keep it pushing, y'all. So just excuse the distraction, distractions. And if you're new to my channel, know that this is just how it is. I keep it pushing. I try my best to get the video done, especially now that I'm committed to uploading on a regular basis. Because previously I was going, uploading a video once a month, once every few months, but I'm committed to uploading regularly. So you're going to just have to deal with the bloops, okay? So back to Dr. Joe Dispenza. One, what is he really saying, essentially? What's really happening through his science? At the end of the day, he's showing specifically that there is power in meditation, what is meditation? Some people have a lot of different beliefs about even what meditation is. Meditation is specifically a practice that doesn't have to be spiritual or religious because, you know, people get in their feelings when we start talking about spirituality and religion. Put that aside. Meditation is a exercise for the brain. That's a perfect way to explain it. And even though exercise you typically think of physical activity, it's the opposite. To exercise the brain or to relax and optimize the brain, what we need is silence. What we need is focused attention. What we need is deep breathing. That's the physiological component. You know, when we're stressed, we're taking shorter breaths. And actually, that is a physiological response in our body. When you're stressed and thinking negative, you're sending messages to your brain and to your body that says, release cortisol. It's life or death out here. I'm so scared. Who knows what's going to happen, you know? And so that has a re uh, result, um, has an effect on our brain, which in turn has an effect on our actions um, and our life, you know, and then our health, uh, ultimately our mental health and physical health. So what Dr. Joe Dispenza is studying is the fact that through meditation, through focused intention, through an open heart. So you know what's awesome about him? Oh, you just got to look him up. He explains everything in such a perfect bundled way, like I mentioned, with spirituality and science. But again, you can tell he's not really biased. He's really just coming from factual um, data. And so through this factual data, what is the point of this video? The point is you can heal yourself. I can heal myself. We can heal ourselves. We can heal others. Specifically through meditation, 
through focus and tension and through realizing that everything is energy. That's a big one. Dr. Joe Dispenza is not the only one asserting that everything is energy. So on an energetic level, there are things going on, exchanges of information, a back and forth that's going on. And so what he's saying is through meditation and through an awareness that everything is energy, through energy healing, we can heal ourselves and others. It's not just a quack science. It's not just, some people would say witchcraft and all this other stuff, whatever you want to call it. It's not that. It's scientific. And it starts with the brain and actually the heart. So I wasn't expecting a neuroscientist to talk about the heart, but basically what he noticed is when he was studying meditation and people maybe being aware of their heartbeat and their heart center and the energy that is released from that area, he said the energy, he uses big words, y'all, the electromagnetic or something energy from the heart I believe this was like three times more measurable, more powerful than what was coming from the brain. So yes, the brain is that center of our body that is instructing so much. The mind is powerful, but the mind doesn't function in isolation. The mind is always functioning in companion with the heart. And so I believe he has some saying that he says brain heart coherence or something of that nature, basically. People are able to heal themselves and others through coherence, through a collaboration, through the mind and heart healing. So the mind, when you think about it, that's the thoughts. That's what he says. He says thoughts are the language of the mind and the brain. And he was like, emotions are the feelings of the heart, the language of the heart. And so what he's noticing is that when people are consistent with the meditation, when they believe, you know, um, and that's the psychological police, when you believe that it's even possible. So you believe that it's possible. That's a psychological component because your beliefs have power over your life. Secondly, when you understand the brain and respect the brain and give it the time and space and deep breath that it needs, when you allow yourself to be silent and just allow yourself to be still and realize that being still is actually powerful. A lot of us believe and have been taught, especially in, you know, today's day and age where even in school, there's so much expectations on us, but a lot of us believe that we have to do, do, do. And there is a famous quote that I thought was original to me, but um, actually Dr. Wayne Dyer was the first one who said this, but we are not human doings. We're human beings. We're meant to be, we are meant to have space and stillness and to slow down. And it's fine to be fast. It's fine to do. It's fine to accomplish. But when you get to the point that you're stressing yourself out and you're not really living the life that you intend, that's when you want to slow down and realize that meditation and stillness is a powerful thing. And so anyways, I kind of just went in a big circle just to come back around to say that it's not just the mind, it's the mind and the heart. And so these people are believing they have the psychological component. They have the belief that yes, you know, healing is possible too. They have the meditation practice. Meditation is a whole nother video, a whole nother topic because it does take practice, especially when, again, like I mentioned, we are used to being human doings. And thirdly, it's the heart center. So some people such as myself believe in chakras, energy centers. So it's basically saying you have physical organs, but spiritual people or even religious people, you know, different people from different backgrounds do believe that there are something called chakras. I'm going to pause. Oop, Tay Tay, say hey and bye. Hi, You're not hacking my video. I don't think it's the start. You don't think it is? I it's not starting? It's okay. We'll I'm figure it out. It out okay. It out you can probably take it back, right? Well, we can figure it out. Don't worry, because if it's if you just didn't do it, then someone else. So, hubby tried to fix the starter. And at the moment, it's not starting. But guess what? You have proof that I'm still going to smile. I'm still going to have faith. Money at the moment is a little bit tight, but you know what I believe? I believe in speaking things into existence. So it's only tight for the moment because, you know, we've moved to Florida and we're trying to purchase a home and we're going through a lot of transition. So it's tight in the moment, but in any moment, anything can change. So let's speak that to existence. But back to the video. This is like my fourth or fifth take, so I cannot afford to edit it out. So we're just going to keep on flowing. So it is the psychological foundation, believing that, you know, healing is possible. Miracles happen pretty much all the time. We just don't see them all the time. But you have people like Dr. 
Dr. Joe Dispenza who are capturing those miracles scientifically. Two, we have the brain, respecting the brain, understanding what it takes to have a healthy and happy brain. Three, understanding what it takes to have a healthy and happy heart and realizing there are a lot of energy centers and this is not just quack spiritual science. It is grounded science that is being studied. So the moral of the story is y'all, take each moment and realize a miracle can happen in any moment. I don't mean that lightly, literally. Um, any moment can change your life. Two, it takes practice and you can get there with realizing you got to believe. Start with the psychological foundation of believing or even experimenting. Two, practice the meditation of the mind. And three, open up that heart chakra, open up that heart and have a congruence, if that's the right word, between the three and magic and miracles will happen. That is it. I've got to go precisely at 11.11.